Hello and welcome to Rudy's Electronics Lab. Today I'm going to compare two devices that are kind of different category of devices, but both of them are marketed to do power analysis type of things. And I just wanted to see um, how they complement each other or whether the oscilloscope based solution is actually an alternative to the, to, the, to the kind of dedicated type of device. So I'm looking at the uh, GW Instec here as a dedicated power meter and the, uh, the signaling unit here as an oscilloscope uh, which can have power analysis type of, uh, of functionality. Now, since we got quite a lot of ground to cover, uh, I'm going to organize it in the, uh, the following way. First, I want to talk about the scope of functionality of both of the devices. Then I want to talk a fair bit about preparing the input signals and the probe, because that's going to be an important part of our work of today. Then I'm going to do some actual testing in the lab. I'm going to do basic power measurements. I'm going to measure harmonics, power efficiency, and an inrush currents, and I'm going to offer you my final thoughts. But I'm also trying to give you today a couple of tips and tricks in my episode. Um, first of all is how to build a low noise current probe uh, on the basis of using a differential probe. And you're going to see that, 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 that noise issues are going to be a bit of an issue of uh, today's episode. The second thing is um, that I'm going to show you how you can use the GD GW Instec for current inrush type of measurement. This is something that is not advertised or talked about in the manual of the device. I'm going to show you that this is nevertheless possible. And thirdly, I want to do how you can do uh, efficiency measurement uh, using any scope with a good uh, math uh, function. So let's get uh, going. First about the functionality of the two devices. And starting with the GW uh, Instec, um, I already made an earlier video about that, uh, that device, you can look that up. And there I talked about this 25 plus or so type of, of measurement functions and mostly the type of basic power analysis type of functionality like power quality and, uh, and all that type of stuff. Um, we got some more advanced stuff like harmonics, um, we also have waveform display, etc. Um, so I'm not going to dwell too, um, too long on that. Um, more interesting is exactly what I did then in the Siglent oscilloscope there. And for the Siglent oscilloscope to do power analysis, you need to get a, a software license. If you get it as a separate license, it's 240 euros excluding uh, VAT. And then you're going to get a, a, a number of special type of, of functionalities to, uh, to do power analysis. And here I'm providing an overview of these functionalities. Um, we got a couple of, 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 of uh, typical input-based things like power quality, harmonic uh, inrush. That's also what we find on the, uh, um, on the, the, the GW Instec. We got a couple of measurements that are specifically related to switching power supplies and their, their, their design and, and testing, that switching loss, slew rate, modulation, and safe operating area. Then we got a couple more of output-related uh, measurements, like a ripple management, turn-off, turn-off measurement, uh, transient response, power efficiency, which is actually a combination of input and output, and frequency response measurement. And as you can see here, they're all part of the device. They're, most of them are covered in the manual. One of them, the, uh, the safe operating area, is somehow completely missing in the manual. No idea why, but it is on the device, and there's also some description on the device uh, how to connect. Uh, your things. And in today's episode, I'm going to focus on the more classic type of measurement, so power quality, current harmonics, in rush, and also power efficiency. I'm not going to dig into the specific design type of thing for switching power supplies. That's not something I'm, I'm personally interested in, um, in doing. Now, I told you I want to talk a little bit about um, about different type of signal options here, because this is going to be quite important here. And the GW Instec as being a dedicated power meter um, already has everything kind of built in. So it got like a voltage measurement differential, it got like current measurement, and that is on the basic of a shunt that is built into, built into the device. Um, what, what you can get, and what I think you probably should want to get, is this uh, test fixture here with all the connection on it. It's fairly expensive, I think 250 euros, but it is super convenient to connect your dot and it's got some, some safety measures, a safety fuse in here as, uh, as well. And you can add a, uh, a power clamp as well, should you not want or should you not be able to, uh, to get access to the, uh, or disconnect the, uh, the power cabling. Now, 
on the signaling device is going to be a bit of a different story because of course the type of things that we want to measure cannot be directly connected to a um, oscilloscope so we're going to need probes to do that so in terms of the uh, of the voltage measurement we want to use uh, differential high voltage probes because that is a safe way to do it um, and on the side of current measurement uh, the typical thing to do is using a, um, a current clamp uh, probe connected to the oscilloscope and using a current shunt is not possible, at least it's not something that is talked about at all, but I'll get a little more into that in a little moment. And if we see the type of, um, of probes that Sigland is recommending for use in combination with his power options, it's a couple of, uh, it's a couple of probes that go until 30 amps, and they have a 1 milliamp measurement resolution. There are also probes that go all the way to 150 amps, have a 10 milliampere, uh, measurement resolution in the most sensitive power mode. But these are fairly expensive devices. They start at 2,500 euros excluding VAT, go up to 5,000 excluding uh, VAT. Um, I don't have them, so I, I can't uh, test them. So I'm going to do my work today with what I would call um, poor man's uh, probes here. So what I'm going to be using is a couple of uh, Mixic uh, probes that you also might know under, under other names. Some of them, I think, or variants thereof are, are available via the EEV block website. And I'm going to use two uh, Mixic differential voltage probes. I got them right over here. And there is one differential voltage probe that goes to 700 volts and the other to, I think, one and a half thousand uh, 1,300 uh, volt, um, and of course we got safety connectors on there. And in order to connect this type of things, well, we can connect it, of course. Um And in order to safely connect those to the uh, to the oscilloscope, I made a couple of cable things uh, where we got basically cable to give us access both to the the current clamp and as well to specific safety connectors. <laughs> this is a bit uneasy. Specific safety connectors because, of course, we don't want to electrocute um, ourselves. So in terms of current measurements, I got two current clamps that are actually the same brand. They're also uh, mixing current clamps. I think they're also pretty well known. Um, they go until 100 amp, they have a 10 amp and a 100 amp uh, range setting and they have the, the typical current clamp that we can connect to, uh, to the cabling of our, our DOT. In order to connect that all safety to the oscilloscope, I made a number of, of little cables here. Um, so that allows easy connection of the current clamp here with the different cabling here. This is a silicone measurement cable, uh, but also some, um, some safety connections, some Hirschman safety connections, because we, of course, we don't want to electrocute ourselves during the, uh, the experiments. We're still talking about connecting things to the, to the grid here. Um, later we will see that there are a couple of concerns here about the level of noise that I'm seeing here with, uh, with the Mixic uh, probes. And of course there are other options going to be more expensive. Actually I do have one other current probe. It is a very fancy uh, Tektronix scope with very good specification and actually also comes with a specific pre-amplifier and, 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 and power supply. And and this is really high spec stuff. It was very expensive. It still is very expensive uh, second hand. And you also got a great uh, range here of different management uh, settings, of different uh, measurement settings of, of ranges, in which you can really optimize like the, the signals to noise uh, ratio. Unfortunately, these are, um, these devices can also easily uh, break. They're rather vulnerable and and it's the preamp that already broke two or three times in a row now. And the last time I, I, I got it here again, again, it didn't work. And I'm not any sure anymore. I, I want to put a lot of effort into repairing it or having it replaced with another preamplifier because it's, it's still very expensive, still secondhand. So we're going to do with the, the Mixic probes as I, uh, as I have them here of today. Now I want to dig a little bit deeper into these different modes that I just talked about that we find in, in the Sigland and what kind of probes they, uh, they require. Um, and I made this little overview here for you. So we, have, we see the same modes that we saw in the, uh, in the previous table. And you see sometimes we're going to 
need some differential voltage probes, sometimes some current uh, probes, sometimes we need two of each, uh, but with some functionality we also need some, some regular scope uh, probes. And all of that is being explained in what Siglent called a connection guide, that is in most cases at least both in the manual of the device but also on the on-screen uh, display. Um, I'll show you two of these on-screen displays. Here we got some for, uh, for harmonics, that, so that's quite convenient. We got it right away on the, uh, on the device. And here I'm showing a, another one for power um, efficiency. Although I must say that sometimes a part of the text is missing and there's some annoying typos, etc. So, so this could be a little bit more polished if you, uh, if you would ask me. Anyway, I want to get a little bit deeper into the connection diagram because how do we then connect these different probes for current and, 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 and voltage, etc. Well, for, for what I call connection guide A, because sometimes they are the same for a number of functions. So for, quality, for power quality, current harmonics, and for inrush current, it's basically connecting them to the input of the, 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 the differential probe and a, and a current probe. Pretty straightforward and rather similar to what we do on the uh, GW Instec. And actually, if we want to measure power efficiency, then uh, we add the same thing to the, to the output of the, the, the dot, and then we can compare input and output, obviously. So some of the other measurements are more specifically to when the dot is actually a, uh, a switching power supply. So I, I, I drawn here one, and then we have to go to the interior of the switching power supply. So switching loss, slew rate, and safe operating area, they're actually measuring over the switching element, the switching fat here, and having a current probe as well. Measurement like modulation, look at the, uh, at the pulse width modulation at the input of the fat, and have a current probe as well. And output rimple is simply measured over the, 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 the output of the dirt with a voltage probe. And actually you can find a lot of, you can do that with a regular oscilloscope as well, and you can find a lot of videos on, on YouTube how to do that. And you might actually not want to do that with a volt, uh, voltage probe in the first place. This is not such an easy measurement. And um, okay, it's beyond the scope of this lecture to, uh, uh, to do that today, but... Um, it's beyond the scope of our video today to, uh, to go into the details here, um, but this is the way it's being explained in the, in the Siglent manual. Then turn off, turn off measurement, we add a differential probe here. And a couple of other ones, transient response and power supply rejection ratio, we have a differential probe and a current probe and a voltage probe combined. Now turning to the explanation of the old measurements that Siglent offers, there is some stuff in the manual and I like that for some of the functionalities we, 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 we get some nice, uh, nice description. I must be honest, it's only some of them really, uh, but we do have these descriptions for the, the basic uh, power type of, of measurement. So this is a screenshot of what you find in the, uh, in the manual here. And then again, if we go to the actual device and we start to do some, uh, some measurements, we see in the manual something like active power, and then we look at the device, but we don't have anything like active power at all. Then I did a couple of the, the calculations, and then we would actually find out that what they call active power in the manual is called real power on the device itself. So, so yeah, that's a bit too bad. This is a bit inconsistent in terms of the language use, but in, in the end it all kind of works or so, but, but I would have preferred if it would be a little bit more consistent and tied up the, uh, the manual with the, uh, with the device itself. Okay, I created a setup here in my, um, my lab and we got the GW Instec, we got the Siglent, and I also got two other scopes connected here. I'll show you in a moment why. This is not going to be a full comparison, but there's a reason why I got these other scopes here. But first the uh, GW um, Instec here, if I turn on my, my load here, as you will see, 236 volt, that's the mains power here, mains voltage, and there's a current flowing of 21 milliamp. It's a small um, LED light, so this all makes sense. And we also got like the, uh, the, the power factor and, and all the other measurements here. Now, just fine. Let's move to the Siglent. First, we're measuring the voltage. I already connected a differential voltage probe and I've configured it correctly. And there we go. We see a, um, a sign uh, signal. Um, and of course we can go and see the same sign signal here um, as well. 
um, we see it's a 650 volt peak peak, 237 volts um, in, um, in, in root mean square, and, and, and that is of course the 236 that we're seeing here as, uh, as well. Now, let's go and take a look at the, um, at the power management then, and for that I'll be using the, the current probe, I also um, configured it, I put it in the, uh, the lowest range, which is appropriate for this setting, and let's see what we're getting here. Yeah, and you see we're getting a, um, a lot of noise on the, um, on the current probe here. This is of course not necessarily a problem of our signal, but this is the fact that these type of current probes that I'm using here are not really good at picking up relatively small currents in the range of, of, of milliamps or even tens of milliamps. It really should be hundreds of amps or full amps or so that these, these clamps are good in, in picking up. They got a, a fair amount of noise. Um, why is the GW Instec not suffering from that type of noise? Because we also see here the, the current figure here that is in, um, in, in red and that doesn't show any noise. Well, the thing is that this one here got like, I think, six different um, ranges that it can auto switch between for, for current. And on top of it, it got two physical different shunt resistors that it can switch between with a, uh, with a relay. So it really is able basically to, 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 to condition itself well to the input signal. And we can't do that right now with the, uh, the signal. Now if you go and look on the internet and you read a little bit about this current probe, everybody will be explaining that you're going you're gonna to want to use something like averaging or so if you want to use, uh, measure small currents with this, uh, this device. So what type of averaging strategies we have here on the, on the Sigilant? Well, in the acquire menu, we can switch to a 10 bits mode, but I really don't see any difference at all when I move to this, uh, this 10 bits uh, mode here. So that, that is not much of a uh, help. And, and that's why I just want to compare it to two other oscilloscopes I got uh, right here. I configured them in, um, in a similar way. So we got the, the voltage here. Actually, I've also put the same measurement readings. We got the, uh, the current signal here. And yeah, it's, it's, it's equally noisy. Um, but on the, uh, the Roden and Swartz oscilloscope, we can basically go to the high resolution mode and there we basically already see a significant reduction of noise. So what it's doing basically, it is picking up a lot of different samples around the same point in time and is averaging them because the signal we're looking at, it's so much slower than the, the, the sample rate of the scope. Um, the nice thing is about this, that it does not require the signal to be periodical, repeating itself. This signal is repeating itself, um, but that is not a, a, a condition for this, uh, this type of mode. Um, and if the signal is repeating itself like here, we can also alternatively use the averaging mode. As you can see here, an averaging here on 16 observations. And you see, we nicely average out the noise and get a much easier measurement. And rather likewise, our Keysight oscilloscope can do the same thing here. I configured here basically the, um, the again, the, uh, the voltage signal with all the same measurements here. I configured here the other signal coming in. We see a, um, a big amount of noise. Um, oh, I forgot to mention you, but on all the scopes I have selected uh, 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth uh, limitation. So in that sense, we are comparable. We don't need anything close to 20 megahertz um, anyway. Um, so on this scope, we can go to the acquire menu and we can go to the high resolution mode. Uh, and, and, and even more so than with, with the other scope, basically we get a very nice picture already in the, the high resolution mode and also a lot of updates. That's what the, the key side is really good at. And we also got an averaging mode here and we're going to average 16 times here. Yeah, and look what a nice, what a nice trace we're, we're, we're getting here. Um, yeah, so this type of averaging is really useful if you got like small signals, but the noise basically uh, that you're dealing with is, is Gaussian. Um, and by averaging out, we really get back to the kind of signal we want to see. And, and I don't have this type of similar type of effective strategies here on the, uh, on the signal device. And um, well, if anybody knows, then, then please let me know in the, in the comments. But, uh, but this is something that I, I feel really, uh, really lacking. Um, 
Now, in order still to do my experiment here with, with, with the load that I have, I tried to think a bit of, of other strategies and I, I came up with one. I thought, why don't I create a current shunt um, myself? Why don't we do a bit of the same trick as the GW Instec? We're going to take a resistor um, and we're just going to not use a current clamp, but we're going to measure the voltage over that resistor. Of course, for that we'll be using a, uh, a differential uh, probe um, again. And we will choose the resistor value such that on the one hand it gives sufficient voltage basically for the high differential, uh, for the differential voltage probe basically to pick up the signal without too much noise, uh, but small enough that we don't have a considerable drop in voltage on the dot and it starts to behave differently. Now after a little bit of experimentation I have chosen a, a, a 10 ohms uh, resistor uh, that seems to meet this type of uh, requirement. Um, I measured it a bit more precisely with, with, with the DMM and it turns out to be 12.03 ohms. So let us go now at that signal. I connected it here at the, uh, at the same time. I brought my other signals a little bit to the top so we can go and see our new signal. And this is the new signal coming in on our shunt current uh, probe. Um, and I've configured this... Uh, I should be configuring this probe here, basically on the, uh, the resisting uh, value. So I put uh, 1.203 for, uh, yeah, so for our, our 12 ohm resistor, because that is basically, that should bring up the right relationship between, uh, between current and, uh, and voltage. So any resistor, basically, I could type its value in here and I get the right type of relationship here. So what we're getting here, yeah, this is very nice. Huh? We get a very nice type of... Um, of curve here that is representing the uh, yeah the current over our our dot over our load without the type of noise here and we see that the value is almost identical to the value that the current prop is reading in in RMS uh, values it's 22.2 here it's 24.7 we might further calibrate it still looking a little bit more into the resistor value or calibrate to another probe but I think this is a kind of a useful scenario and if I would do this more often I could imagine myself building a nice little fixture box with a with a power plug on top of it with a rotary switch and maybe with a couple of different selectable shunt resistors in there to deal with with different types of um, of loads. I can of course do a similar type of thing on the uh, on the other scopes here on the, um, the Ronin and Swartz. I also got a, um, a channel 3 here it reads the, uh, the same value even closer than on the, uh, the Siglent. And also here I've been entering basically the resistor value here into the, uh, the probe uh, sensitivity, the probe ratio uh, screen here. So a 12 ohms resistor is 1.2 in this, uh, this case. Um, almost similar here on the key side scope. Um, I got the... Uh, the shunt resistor signal here, very nice. Um, unfortunately, on the key side scope, basically I cannot really choose any type of ratio for the probe to sensitivity. It only comes in step from 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, etc. So I got to choose something that is relatively close by. So here I got a reading of 29 amps where it should be 22, but that is because I cannot fully configure the um, the sensitivity to, to any value here. But basically that, that is just a little calculation or correction I could be doing um, manually. So with, with all the scopes basically I can use of course this, uh, this strategy of using a shunt probe. As you will see I moved to another bench. We got a little bit more, uh, more space here to, um, to work. And you see the instruments already being set up to look at some of the basic functionality um, for, for power measurement um, analysis. And here you can also see a little bit more of my setup here. So we got the, uh, the text fixture over here. We got the current probe. Everything is fitted with safety connectors. We got the power unit to the current probe and we got the two differential voltage probe. And the little light uh, bulb that I was using, LED light bulb that I was using for early text, unfortunately had a little accident. So I decided to first to take the first thing that my eye caught was this little ventilator here. Kind of interesting because it draws more current, so it, it allows us also to inspect a little bit the noise figures at, at other values. So let's move back to our instruments now. There we are. 
So actually we're drawing about 200 um, milliamps uh, here. And I'm going to check on the oscilloscope. Here we got the, uh, the voltage curve, of course, of the grid. Here I'm getting in the, uh, the power, uh, the, the current clamp. You see there's even, even on 200 milliamps there's still a, a noticeable noise. It's not that bad anymore, but it's, yeah, it's still noise as we see. Huh? Um, and if, if need be, we still have here... I had uh, our self-made um, shunt uh, resistor value measurement, but let's, let's keep that... Um, now we'll keep it on for a second, we might turn it on in a second. Okay, let's um, go and see the, um, the real thing that we were interested in, and that is the power analysis functionality here. Um, so if we're going there, the device takes a little while to, um, to recall things. Um, we got a couple of different of analysis options here, analysis modes, and we're going to stay at, at power quality for the, for the time being. There's the input setup, and actually I'm going to choose the current clamp for the, uh, for the input, that is input number two, and we can get to see a little connection guide over here, how things are supposed to be connected in this mode, which is rather useful, I would, uh, I would say. So this is all now properly set up, I believe. We go to the power mode here and we turn it into what is called the test state. It's always on the, on the left hand side somehow. There we go. Going to take a little while. Going to be resetting kind of all the input sensitivities, the horizontal time scale. And yeah, look what we, we're seeing here. We see here some of the basic measurements that we expect to be there in a, uh, in a power meter. So we got the power factor. 50.7, yeah, 51.6, fairly close to what the G, uh, GW Instex says. Real power, apparent power, reactive power, the angle of the vector. So here we get to see all the, the real and the imaginary uh, dimensions, basically, of, um, of the power that we, we're drawing. So um, when, when you see this, you might be thinking like, hey, wait a moment, isn't this just kind of the standard measurement menu that uh, the Siglent already uh, has? Do I need to buy this option? Can't I just do this myself? Um, well, some of the stuff you could do yourself. Actually, we see here that we got one channel here, which is mathematics channel one, which is a multiplication of C1 and C2. So here, this is calculating a power, of course. It is voltage times uh, current. And that, of course, we, we could do ourselves, the RMS uh, value for that. Um, but the other things are really new and they're not available in the device. And I, I don't think, know how I will be able to, to make them in the device. So this is really new with the, uh, with the power, uh, power function here. Um, how many measurements do we have? Well, we got the ones that we see right, uh, right now. We can get to a couple more when we're interested in the crest factor. So I'm going here to, uh, to crest. I don't know what to apply it for because I, I never seem to need it. So here we see the, the crest factor, which is expressing basically the, the peaks in the waveform uh, compared to, uh, to averages. Uh, for a sine wave, uh, the crest factor is going to be low. For a complex wave, it can be higher, something to be taken into account with, with, with certain setups. Let's compare it to our DW Instec. It's not showing it right now because it's got a lot of measurements in, um, in there. But in order to, to get to see it, we, we get to, um, I think, to parameter. Let's take the, the main parameter on the top of the screen here. Now it's at, uh, at voltage RMS. And let's bring that one to... Crest Factor Voltage. There we go. So on the GW Instec it's 1.36. Here it's 137%. So it's just expressed as, as percent. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's similar to, uh, to each other. So we got um, yeah, a fair number of kind of basic uh, power management measurements here. I think the GW Instec has, um, has more, about 25 or so. You can watch my other video that I made specifically on this device. Um, but we got a fair set of measurements here, uh, present here in the, uh, in the Siglent. Now we're going to look at the measurement of harmonics, one of the other basic functionalities of, uh, of power meters. Now let's first measure the harmonics with the GW uh, Instec. So you do that by going to the, uh, to the graph menu. Then you go to the harmonics menu, that's the way the device is organized. And you only get to see one fundamental harmonics. What is going on? 
Uh, by default, and I don't know why it's the case, it shows the harmonics for voltage. And of course, that is only the, uh, the sine wave of the, the main. So we got to change that. We got to go to set. We got to change this here into I for current. And yes, there we get to see a whole set of, uh, of current um, harmonics. Um, it's currently set to the IEC standard. You can also set it to, uh, to other standards, but that's the basis of the measurement. Um, and we can see the fundamental, the second fairly strong, then there are five and uh, so the uh, second is uh, the third and the fifth and the seventh equal, and then it kind of goes down into a, a longer type of, uh, of tail. So that's all, um, all kind of clearer, I would say. Now the, the signaling here. Again, I pre-configured the, the, the signal, so we got the, uh, the voltage signal here. We got again the current clamp. And notice there's a fair amount of noise on my, uh, my current clamp, also with this, uh, this light. Um, if that turns out to be a problem, we can always go to the uh, other measurement with the current shunt that I made myself. Huh? So we got it over here and it's, uh, it's readily connected to, uh, to the device. Um, but first we're going to try with, uh, with the current amp. Now we'll go to the um, analysis menu. We go to the power analysis menu. Takes him a little moment to, uh, to get there, recalls a couple of things according to the screen. And we are in the current harmonics screen, current as in, yeah, current flowing in amperes. Um, the input setup is basically that I'm looking at my current clamp. Again, we got a connection guide, which is the same connection guide as for standard power measurement. I'm going to return here um, and I'm going to start the, uh, the test. Then it's going to take, again, a couple of moments to prepare those tests. We can already see it starting up its, um, its SFT functionality. And now it's coming up basically with, uh, with the measuring of all the harmonics and it comes out in a table. It says um, pass here and that means that it is, uh, it's a pass according to the, the standard that was, uh, was chosen in terms of the mask that it, uh, it has. Now, in order to see this in a, um, in a bar graph, we go to configuration, we change from table to bar chart. And now we get to see a bar chart like on the other uh, device, where we see the fundamental harmonic, the third, the fifth, etc. We see until 14, and then we can go 15, 16, until we have the whole of the till, and then we can go all the way until 40 or, um, or so. Uh, so we, um, yeah, so we get to see basically the same uh, harmonics curve as, uh, as a GW instec. Well, we, we should. To be very honest with you, I kind of prefer the presentation as we got on the GW instec. It gives more of an overview at once of the whole harmonic setting rather than do it in um, in this way. But um, but it all seems to be uh, all seems to be correct here. I would also like to do a test when we do the uh, harmonic via the current uh, shunt that we uh, created um, ourselves. So we're going again back into the power analysis menu. For the input setup we choose input free. Yeah, that's good. We start up the test. And let's go again see this in bar chart form. Yeah, so we basically get to see the same thing. So it seems that uh, the harmonics measurement was not too bothered basically by the high amount of noise we still had present in the, uh, in the current measurement. Another function I want to take a look at is um, power efficiency uh, measurement. And I've been really eager to know something more about the power efficiency of this, uh, this uh, variable transformer here. I think it got significant type of losses. So what I did is that I, I took this uh, transformer here, I connected it to um, a 100 watt uh, old light bulb over here, and I connected up the whole uh, system um, according the, uh, the specifications in the, um, in the manual and the, uh, the online um, guide. And again, I got the GW Instec here, but it's only connected to the input of the transformer. And I got the uh, oscilloscope here, and we see both the input to the transformer, so we see the, uh, the, the, the voltage and the current, and we see the output of the transformer, the voltage and the current. And obviously I'm using two differential voltage probes now, and two um, current uh, probes. 
I'm right now still in the, um, the current uh, scope uh, fun function, not yet the power analysis uh, menu, but of course I can use regular type of measurements here. And I pre-configure them. So what I got is um, my mains uh, voltage 235 and a current flow of 300 milliamps. And I got out of my transformer coming 250 volts and a current flow of 360 milliamps. Well, if I take those numbers and I just calculate the power myself, I see a, uh, a total power of, uh, of, of 72 watts going into the, uh, the transformer and I see 55 and a half coming out of the transformer. So that would mean the efficiency is 77% and the losses are 23%. This is of course is assuming that we're not dealing with, dealing with a complex type of signal, but if we look at the waveforms here uh, for this transformer that is almost true. So by, by approximation we should see a, an efficiency of 77%. So let's go and see what the, the actual efficiency of the, uh, the unit is according to the power analysis function. Going to power analysis, I'm already in efficiency mode. The um, input setup is like the one on the probes that I connected and the connection guide. And I, I, I looked carefully here um, and I connect exactly according to this guide, including the, the, the proper direction of the, the current uh, probes. Both of them in the, the arrow in the direction of the flow of the, of the current. I'll tell you in a moment why I'm, 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 I'm stressing this. So I'm going here and I'm going to start here the efficiency measurements. Again, we have to be a little bit patient. It's playing around with the scope, changing the, um, the channel settings. So we got only one measurement basically popping up now and it shows us an efficiency of minus 24%. That, yeah, that might be a little bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit curious, uh, the minus thing, but, but what I think is going on is actually showing the, the losses. So the device loses 24%, but that's not the efficiency. So, so I find the, the choose of wording here um, very confusing to be honest. As a matter of fact, because of this strange presentation with the minus 24%, I just want to do this, this myself, I guess. So, because basically it's just a math function, right? So I'm going to mathematics. I'm going to define a function number one, clear on the current function. So I'm going to take the, uh, the integral, the surface of the, the output. So that is three times four. And I'm going to divide that over the integral of the input. So that's C1, C2. That basically should give me a, um, a, a, a value now. And this value represents so the, uh, the division of the surfaces over each other. So it's a fairly constant value, as you can see. It can only go up and down a little bit. And it's, it's relative to, uh, to one. Um, um, so now I can, can just add a, a, a measurement and I can look at that particular value. I'm going to go here, mathematics, function one, and I'm just going to take its, um, its, its, its value. So I'm going to take the average value, went up and down a little bit. Yeah, 727 milli, so 0.72, so 72%. That is the efficiency of my power supply. I, I actually prefer to do this myself. And I don't need the power analysis function for that. And, and actually I can do this on, 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 on any scope that I have, I think, um, that can do this type of mathematics for, for sure the RTB show scope. What I do find of kind of interesting how this is calculated, because we can see that it uses actually the mathematics function of the, the scope, which is a standard type of function. So let's go into mathematics. And we can see here it's using a formula here. And if I go to the formula editor, what we actually see that we see it is making a, an integral of the power on the, um, uh, on the input of the transformer and making an integral of the power of the output of the transformer. So it is basically calculating like the surfaces if we would plot the, um, the power curve, so, uh, so voltage time, uh, time current. Um, and basically the, the surfaces, if we draw that waveform, that is divided um, against each other uh, here. Yeah, so, um, so interesting to see. Um, well, basically I think this function could also be carried out without having the power analysis um, menu really. 
but um, or, or, or option. Uh, but it's nice that this all comes in in one convenient type of uh, of option here. If we would turn off again the um, power analysis function. takes quite a while, it recalls, so it suggests it's recalling the previous setting of the, of the scope. Um, but unfortunately, we are not getting back to uh, really to previous setting, because the way that I, I, I first created my screen where I had the, uh, the incoming signal uh, position right here and the, the outgoing signal right here, that, that is lost. And that will be one thing I think that, that still could be improved about this software, that if you go out of this function, have it set, yeah, recalling original state, that it actually goes back to original state instead of somewhere halfway in between or so, where they've been toggling around basically with the uh, with the magnitude and and with the position of the uh, the various trays. I would now like to uh, to try the um, the inrush uh, current functions, and um, I'm using for this this analysis the uh, the big variable transformer that I got over here because I think with these coils, big coils, there's going to be significant inrush current or, or outrush if you wish if you turn it off. So I put up my two D devices here. Um, and let me first explain what I'm going to do with the uh, GW Instec because um, GW Instec does not publish at all that it supports inrush current or does not describe it in its, uh, its manual. Um, still, I think you can kind of do it. Um, and how do you do so? Well, you, it basically takes a lot of measurement during a uh, screen uh, update period. So if you put a screen update period to, say, um, um, a second or so, which we'll do right now. It's going to take a lot of samples during this uh, this second, and then the um, using the max hold function, it will basically like hold the highest value within all those sample thousands of samples that I made. So I'm showing here the the, the current uh, plus peak value and the current negative peak uh, value. Another thing important that I have set it to 600 volt and 20 amps fixed. Um, why did I do that? Because you don't want the outer raising to come in there when it sees an inrush current and trying to figure out where it needs to go. Um, so I'm going to put it at, at 20 amps already, the maximum uh, type of, uh, of range. That's why also it, it, it can't really measure well right, uh, right now. Um, because um, yeah, we are in this 20 amps range. Normally you would go to another range here, but that's fine. We just want to pick up the, the big peak here, but these type of measurement, um, I don't really care about. Um, so I'm already going to put it on max hold, so in a moment I can, should be able to pick up the, uh, the peak. Okay, now to the, um, to the signal. So again, I got the, the different input signals here. This is the transformer in, um, in, 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 in constant uh, mode here. Um, and we got one amp per division, so we got uh, 300 milliamps uh, flowing through it. But the inrush current might be much bigger than 300 milliamps, etc. Um, maybe it's going to be multiple amps or, or even more. But let's go and look at the power analysis function and see how this is organized. Takes a little bit of time again to recall. Yeah, so within power analysis, I go to inrush current. I go to the input setup. I already configured the right channel for the input voltage and the current. And then I got expected current. So also here, I will need to set it to um, a value so it won't overload. Oh, that goes away always. Um, I'm going to just put it like on, on, on 50 amps, just to be sure. And I also made sure that, uh, that my current probes are on 100 amps so they can take that. Maximum voltage is 300, so we should be safe here. And it should be able to, to deal with this high incoming type of current. I'm going to turn on the test state. Please turn off the power supply and do next step. I'm turning off the power supply now. I did that. Okay, this one is waiting on max hold. Turn on the power supply. Still waiting on max hold. This one waiting to turn on the power supply. There we go. Okay, so we see a, um, a peak here. Um, so he put it at 16.6 per division, 16.32, 40 amps or so, more than 40 amps. Oh, I also see here a big peak of 58 coming in. Press next step. 
Hmm. He only shows two amps here of inrush current and I also lost my, my information here. But it was a much bigger power P coming by. I just saw that. Hmm. Let's try this once more. I'm going to put this one back on. Next hold. Test that on. Turn off the power supply. That's what I just did. Turn on the power supply. There must be some kind of peak. GW Instec is 600 milliamps. And here we don't see anything. It's probably hidden behind the the, the, the window. Of course the inrush current here can depend on the moment of the phase that I turn it on. So I happen to be on the zero moment and that actually probably just about the case. You see that? If I look at that previous waveform here, um, I think there was very little inrush current because I just happened to go through the zero line at that very moment. It reports 1.3. I don't know where the 1.3 is from. One time more and I hope I really go on the um, on the peak uh, here. So, turning off my power supply. I'm going to put this one on max hold. Power supply is already turned off. Next step. And let's move her in. Okay, here we got a significant peak. So we're at 16.6 .6 amp per division, 16, 32, 48, almost 50 amps, negative, yeah, 57 amps, so that one is also picking it up here, so so I think it's picking up properly the, um, the inrush uh, current here, at least if I measure by division, next step, inrush current minus 3, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm doing something, something wrong here, but I think he observed the inrush current, but it doesn't come back properly in the measurement, but I do see it in the, uh, um, yeah, and at the moment, at the, at the traces, at the moment it is, is doing so. The GW Instec is picking it up quite well, it seems, despite the fact that it never publishes that it can actually be doing so. So it's a, it's a bit of a mixed bag here on the signal, I would say. Okay, having done all these experiments, I want to get to some, uh, some final thoughts here. So what are my final thoughts here about uh, the dedicated meter, the GW Instec? Well, it would still be my preferred choice for quick and on-the-spot basic measurements. You just hook it up, you don't need all the probe type of situations, and it, it works very well for what it is, I think, designed uh, for. Using the Siglent as a power analyzer, um, yeah, I do like the advanced function set, and for those people that are, do, are doing something like switching power supplies, test them or design them, uh, I assume that the, the type of functionality that we find in there is, is very attractive uh, to them. At the same time, using the Siglent for, for power analysis does require a, sign, a significant investment in, uh, in probes. Especially if you want probes that, uh, that, that have a low noise level, you talk about yeah, thousands of euros of investment in probes, I think, to bring you to that point. You might consider to tweak a little bit around and work a little bit with the, uh, with the suggestion that I gave, build a power shunt probe your, yourself, but still you're going to need quite a lot of stuff. Um, so if you already have that kind of stuff, it's interesting, but if you all have to buy it specifically for this function, I wonder whether it is worthwhile. Then the software implementation and firmware implementation on the Siglent, it is really a mixed bag. On the one hand, with some of the measurements, we get new measurement functions with the software option that are, are useful, that are not there on the, uh, on the regular scope in terms of measurement things or other scopes, and, and, and I like what they do. Um, on other things, I'm, I'm, I'm really more, more critical. Some things is the way that things are simply presented, like, uh, like you saw in this video, my comments about the power efficiency, because I, it's presenting power efficiency, but I think it's mixing that up with, with losses in terms of terminology. But more problematic, for example, is the inrush current measurement that I, I simply can't get to work. I can see that the device observes the inrush current. I can kind of figure out how what's more or less going on in the device by counting the trays on divisions, but in the end it's showing me the, the wrong measurement. And maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I really feel that the device needs some, some polishment uh, over there. 
And finally, I still have the feeling I have to deal with some of the limitations that the, the, the Siglent has, and especially in these type of use cases where we work with measurements with a fair amount of Gaussian noise, um, the Siglent scope does not have strategies to cope with that type of, uh, of noise reduction. And on other scopes, we typically find everything functions or we have high res mode that bring down this type of, of noise. But we don't have any of these things on the Siglent, and I think they are really lacking if you do this type of, of measurements as I was showing you today. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Do subscribe to my channel and hope to see you back in, a, in the next episode.